Welcome to an illustration of Full Contour Workshop. My name is Donnie Poe. I'm the teaching technician at UOP and Alan Williams, the class of 2019 DDS, is going to help me. The first thing you want to do on a workshop is outline your height of contours and your line angles. This will help you when you get to a uh, monocolor workshop. It will help you see the angles. Notice the incisal edge also. We also do this on the lingual aspect because you will get to the lingual shortly and it will help you shape your tooth. Notice the cingulum, a new aspect in wax ups for you. You have a stump number eight prep in your kit. This is what you will be using today. You're going to put a thin layer of the base wax using a mono wax color, you will be able to see the detail of the line angles and the height of contour much easier. Starting with the thin layer of wax on your prep stub, you will notice from this point on it will be much easier for you to continue your wax up. Placing your number 8 stub back into your type of knot, we can now develop and begin to develop our anatomical features. The first thing we want to do is make two cones that reach up to the contact areas of our adjacent teeth. The cones need to be self-supporting because you will be removing this wax up. Now we're going to start the middle lobe of the number 8 central and reach up into the incisal aspect of the tooth. Our central incisors, if you notice, on number 9, have three lobes and two depressions. They are the mesial and distal lobe, and the central lobe, and a depression in between each one. I'm also developing the height of contour for the full length of the tooth. Shortly we will turn the tooth on a different angle and you will notice. The pencil is a good way to show you if you've reached the incisal length of your desired wax up. You want to hold the pencil on the same edge as the adjoining central so that you can see if you've reached the desired length. One thing you can notice about this wax up too is I'm having a little difficulty controlling my wax because I'm a little bit, you know, electric in, uh, waxing instrument is a little bit hot. These are the things you need to watch for when you're doing your wax up. Notice this aspect right here, when I add the wax, I can't get it to connect. That tells me that my instrument is a little too warm. Letting the wax application cool briefly in between adding more will keep it from running away from you. Notice the incisal edge now is a little short. We'll come back to that. This angle also starts to show you the uh, inclination of the height of contour. Obviously I need to add more at the cervical area and from this viewpoint it looks like the incisal edge is facially oriented. Developing line angles to shape to the tooth next to it will make it look more like a mirror image of that tooth. And in the centrals, that is a very important aspect of aesthetics. Taking the tooth out of the type of knot, we can begin to develop the proximal area and the proximal contact. Letting it cool a second before we put it back into the model will keep you from pushing that wax out of the way. Do the distal and then do the mesial and again let the wax chill momentarily before you put it back into the model. Continuing to develop our axial contours we will work with line angles to shape a mirror image of number nine and we will also work with our height of contour. 
Develop the cervical edge and check by rotating your model in different angles. From this angle, you can truly see the height of contour and the issues that need to be addressed. The cervical area needs to be brought out more, and the incisal edge seems to be out more labially. These can be adjusted by using your electric waxer and lightly moving or slightly carving away to shape the tooth. Going to the lingual aspect, we will start developing lingual marginal ridges. Marginal ridges mirror the adjacent tooth and will be used in occlusion if the adjacent tooth has occlusion. This is what we will check when we close the type of knot. We continue developing the lingual aspect by adding a cingulum. The cingulum is more distal lingual than mesial lingual. This will help you place it. We continue adding to marginal ridges and line angles to develop the contour. Closing the type of knot, we will look for occlusion. If you have occlusion on number 9, you would want it on number 8. If you do not have occlusion on number 9, you want to mirror number 8 to reflect that. Noticing that we have contact on the lingual of number 8, but not having contact on the lingual of number 9, suggests that it would be too much pressure on number 8 to continue this way. We will shape the lingual of number 8 slightly out of occlusion in MI to reflect number 9. As you start moving in the protrusive movement, we will probably connect at the incisal edge of number 8 and 9 simultaneously. Letting the lingual chill and cool just a little, we will move back to the facial aspect and start our fill-in. Remember that you have three lobes, mesial, distal, and facial lobe, and you have two depressions. These are the anatomical features of the facial aspect of the number eight wax-up. Again, checking occlusion, notice that there is no function on number 9, but we do have it on number 8. Waxing while being videotaped keeps me from focusing on the actual waxing aspect, so I would like to point out a, a few things that I've noticed that you need to be able to look for and correct yourself during your wax up. Looking at embrasures from a facial aspect, number eight is supposed to be a mirror image of number nine. Looking at the incisal, the mesial incisal embrasure, the shape is in the right spot, but the incisal edge is too short, and it's more of a rounded shape. It should be a little bit more square, like the number nine. Now looking at the distal, incisal embrasure. The shape is correct. The incisal edge of this number eight wax up though is more rounded. It should be flatter on the incisal edge. We'll talk about that again in a few moments. And now looking at the distal cervical embrasure, we can see that without the inner dental papilla, it makes it very difficult to follow the emergence profile. The length of this preparation also makes it more difficult to follow the same emergence profile. And now moving to the mesial cervical area, the height of contour of that profile looks very good. Notice that the inner dental papilla would show you a lot more information. And now looking at the overall shape of the tooth in general, number eight appears to be more ovoid Number nine appears to be more rectangular. What will help correct this is if we had a more cervical margin, we would have more room to extend the length of this tooth. And if we went to the incisal edge and flattened off the incisal edge, this tooth would start to look more rectangular and less ovoid. As we rotate the tooth around, we can check for 
facial contours, and facial profile. From this view, you can see the cervical area of number nine and the shape going in back into the mouth, but I cannot see the incisal edge. This is a distal view. It would be good if we look from every angle. As we continue rotating to check the profile from another angle, we go all the way around to the mesial angle, and we can tell that our profile has issues. The incisal edge from this angle looks more rounded, and as we continue on, we will see now that we have lost the cervical area, but our incisal angle is still sticking more labially into the profile. Viewing from the incisal edge, I can see embrasures on the mesial and distal shape very similar to number nine. This is a self-cleansing aspect. The incisal edges fit within the arch. The incisal edge of number nine has a lingual tilt to it that I will point out that number eight does not have. From the incisal view, I also notice that the mesial facial profile of number eight does not reflect and mirror number nine. By adding wax to the mesial facial profile of number eight and subtracting from the distal facial profile of number eight, we would rotate this tooth ever so slightly to fit the arch better. Always continue to rotate around. The Hollenbeck now is showing you the lingual and buccal edge of the incisal edge and how it is not replicated in the number eight wax-up. This is a very important feature in the wax-up.